Hey guys, Davin Lim, Board Certified Dermatologist. I've got my colleague Ashini here. Hi. And today we'll be talking about spironolactone. So Ish, we prescribe spiro, you prescribe it more than I do. Yes. What are your two main indications for it? So I normally prescribe it for acne and hair loss. Cool, cool. With acne, is there a particular type of acne that spironolactone, I guess, responds or, or spironolactone is the optimal treatment for? Yeah, so I tend to uh, use it for hormonal acne and obviously in females and not in men. Okay, so with hormonal acne, what are the clinical features of hormonal acne which would you, you go, you know, that more than likely is hormone mediated as compared with the normal pimples, papules, cysts that we see in teenagers? Yeah. So usually in women over 25, um, we tend to attribute uh, hormone as hormonal causes as the main cause of acne. Uh, other features are acne that's around the chin or the location of the acne can be a clue as to if it's hormonal. Look, hormonal acne is just one of those things, it's a big misnomer because realistically it's hormones that kind of drive all of acne, isn't it? So whether it be your IGF levels or your androgens or what have you. And most people when they say, you know, you probably got hormonal acne. They, their reply back is, but my hormone levels are normal. Uh, we see that all the time. So yeah. what's, what's the explanation for that? So I normally say that in 30% of women over the age of 25, hormonal levels can be normal. However, they still do respond in 30% of women to the spironolactone despite the normal hormonal levels. So how does um, spironolactone work in the context of treating hormonal acne? So spironolactone is an anti-androgen uh, and it works by reducing the impact of the androgen on the oil gland itself. Cool. So basically reduces oil production. Yeah. And that can have a flow on effect because that reduces inflammation. You see acnes, which is your um, bacterial counts and so forth. So what is your starting dose normally for um, sparring like that? So I actually normally start at 100 milligrams. Uh, some people do start a little bit lower, but the studies have certainly shown that the most effective dose is starting at 100 milligrams. Yeah. And the side effects, I mean, generally speaking, is one of those secret medications that derm use a lot and we're not really worried about side effects. However, there are one or two side effects that we are a little bit concerned about. And tell me what they are and how do you monitor it and what level do you actually start monitoring for those side effects? So uh, when I start people on spironolactone, I normally uh, give them a long list of side effects. I let them know they will have increased breast size, breast tenderness and uh, irregular periods, which can yeah. be really annoying to, to some women. Do, do those periods regulate over time or once you get irregular, they were irregular for months on end or did they kind of find a medium of regulation? I found with some of my patients it's it's quite variable. Some can start to sort of become a little bit more normal and some are just all over the place. Do you think it's dose related? I do think it's dose related, absolutely. Yeah, cool, cool. So we talked about that irregular period cycles, breast tenderness, breast enlargement. What else are there that you're concerned about when it comes to side effects? So it can also increase the potassium levels in your blood. And certainly um, if I'm using higher doses above 100 milligrams, um, I'd certainly be checking for uh, those levels. And additionally, it can lower your blood pressure. Yep. In young women, they tend to have low blood pressure anyway. So. That's what it's first used for, isn't it? A potassium sparing diuretic which is basically an antihypertensive that lowers your blood pressure. Yeah. So one of the good hints that is what we give is like try to get low potassium foods. So high potassium foods are things like bananas and nuts and things like that. So I always tell patients, eat bananas like maybe one a day, um, but certainly check the um, potassium levels. Look, I, when I used to prescribe it, I, I do exactly what you do. I usually start off at around 100 milligrams. I used to start maybe 50 milligrams ages ago, but now it's like 100 each time. Uh, and I do check for um, potassium levels as well once it, I escalate. How long does it take before it starts, before patients can expect to see a result? Because for all these types of medications, often there's a long wait time, isn't it? Yeah, so I normally say with spironolactone to come back in three months to assess the, the results. Um, certainly some people may not even start to see a really good result by the, until the three month mark. Yep. And what combinations do you like? So <clears throat> you can prescribe spironolactone as a standalone, but you mix that with, do you add a topical with that as well? Or what do you normally do? Yeah, so I normally do add in topical treatments with spironolactone. I can use spironolactone in a number of ways. Sometimes I may treat someone with uh, isotretinoin first and then um, add in the spironolactone later, or I may just, if they don't want 
isotretinoin and just use spironolactone uh, with something like Differin gel or uh, another retinoid. Yeah, cool. So for patients who really have bad side effects, or side effects which are not really well tolerated to Accutane, uh, you can often use a lower dose of Accutane and supplement that with um, spironolactone. And often there's an overlap where we might start both patients together knowing that it's going to take three months before the spironolactone has maximal effect, yeah. Cool, cool. So for acne, guys, just to summarize, it is a relatively safe medication. It's used for hormonal acne, uh, best used in women. Uh, it does take about three months before you have the added benefits or see the benefits from it. And it can be combined with many other treatments, including oral as well as topical treatments. Let's move on to your specialty, which is hair disorders. So with hair disorders, what type of hair loss um, can respond to spironolactone? So androgenetic hair loss uh, tends to respond to spironolactone. That's female pattern baldness. Sorry, yes, female <laughs> pattern baldness. <laughs> just, just so we're not confused because spironolactone is not used in males, yeah? So, so what's your, I guess, what do you tell patients with that? So at what stage of hair loss do you normally initiate? Is it early, late stage? How, how do you approach it? Uh, yeah, so often I may start early to mid sort of uh, hair loss. Uh, and once again, I mentioned the same sort of side effects as I mentioned for acne, so increased breast size and breast tenderness and the irregular periods as well. Uh, and I do let people know that it is more of a long-term medication rather than a shorter-term medication. So let's have to get thinning in, in, you know, when we do a clinical assessment and, and we understand that they're, you know, they've got clinically significant um, female pattern baldness. Do you tell patients that once you take this tablet, you'll grow hair back, or is it better as a medication to stabilize hair loss? So I let people know that the role of this is actually more to stop the shedding and to uh, stabilize hair loss. There are other medications that we can use in conjunction to encourage hair growth. What are they? So I tend to use minoxidil. minoxidil. And do you go oral or do you do topical minoxidil? Uh, usually I do oral, but if people are particularly hesitant or don't want to, then I would consider the topical form. Yeah. Esh is actually a very humble person because I know she's done lots of papers in regards to minoxidil, is that right? Um, You've done quite a fair few publications. So guys, look, she's an absolute expert with this. It's a very, she's a very silent achiever, but and very humble as well. <laughs> guys, just to summarize this, so in the context of hair loss of spironolactone, the dose is very similar to that of acne. We're looking at about 100 milligrams. We can escalate it up to 150. Some people even go up to 200, yeah, don't they? they do, up yeah. to 200 milligrams. The caution is exactly the same. We need to check for potassium levels. Sometimes we check for blood pressure as well, especially if you're symptomatic. It does take about three months before it stabilizes. It can be used with other combinations, including oral or even uh, topical minoxidil. And guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a short one, but hope hopefully it summarizes what spironolactone can do for you. Bye for now.